Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of how to E85 ready your car. So in this part we're going to be fitting a fuel pressure regulator, which in this case is a Turbo Smart FPR 800. Uh, what the 800 refers to is, well, in theory the horsepower rating that it is equivalent to in flow rate. So I'm guessing that's based on like 98 fuel unleaded. Petrol, so on E85, we're probably looking at around 600 horsepower ish that this thing can handle. Um, and the version 2 one, which is this one, uh, can support ethanol. So I think the version 1 couldn't, but correct me if I'm wrong. So as you can see, you get it with no fittings, they're 1 8th MPT. So what I've got is some fittings to put some little um, 90 degree fittings on there. And yeah, that's about it really. So then we've got our injectors, which are a uh, Bosch 1250cc. And we've also got the genuine Bosch plug for the injector because the standard SR plug is different. So we need to change the plugs. Then we finally, we got the rail. And yeah, so then we're just gonna fit in the car. Cool. Alrighty, so done a little bit since the last little video. So what I've done is I've mounted the injectors into the rail, assembled the rail, so I've plugged it all up, put brackets where they need to go, fittings for the fuel lines, and um, yeah, put the injectors in the rail. Now where the injectors go into the rail, um, you need to put Vaseline or uh, petroleum jelly on the O-ring. Otherwise, if you go in dry, it'll rip the O-ring, or it could shred it. So, uh, rule of thumb for life in general, never go in dry. So, we're going to put Vaseline on those. Now, for these particular injectors, they just fit straight in. However, for different injectors, they come with different adapter collars, whether you have like a 12mm or a 14mm injector. So, you may need to use those, but in my case, I didn't. Um, <clears throat> they give you Dash 8 fittings as well, but I use Dash 6 because there's really no point using dash 8 um, because the internal diameter is the same so if you put a dash 8 fitting it's, you're not going to have any purpose other than a more expensive fitting so we've got our fittings on there now in the engine itself I've removed the injectors sorry that it's dark guys but you know just work at night um, I've taken the injectors out and then these little adapter collars go in there which are provided in the fuel oil kit uh, they again got an o-ring on the outside so make sure you lube it up and make sure that the seal area where the o-ring is going to go is nice and clean otherwise you'll tear the o-ring and it will leak. I've also mounted the fuel pressure regulator here just with a couple of tech screws nice and tight and um, what's going to happen is my alloy is going to come out here so it'll just do a little bit of a kick. I might have to change this to a 90 degree fitting but I'll see how we go and then my feed is going to come so the outlet of the fuel pressure regulator is just going to go straight down and join into that one there. And then my fuel feed from my tank comes out of here and it's going to loop around the other side of this hose and then feed into the rail. So it's going to be rather tight, but we'll see how we go. Hopefully uh, what I've got pictured in my head works, otherwise I might need to change some fittings over. But uh, I'll show you the end result in a second. Okay, so the fuel system is all hooked up and it's been dynoed and I've taken it to the drags and everything is all good. So I ended up changing this one to a 90 uh, because it's a lot nicer, nice and clean lines. Got all the plugs in, uh, this is all just cable tied to the fuel rail which runs really nicely. Nice and neat, easy to access to pull the um, injectors out, it's very very simple there's enough length there to um, to not have to disconnect any fuel lines, all I have to do is just undo these two bolts the one there, and swing this up and I can just pull the rail out and pop injectors out if they need changing or servicing or whatever due to E85 it's quite gnarly on the injectors, you do need to get them cleaned every now and then uh, probably not on a daily driver, but because this one sits around a fair bit, I do try to side it once a week. But um, yeah, the the 85 does gum them up after a while. 
Now, on these little lower seals area here, I had to change from the O-ring to a it's kind of like a square ring, similar to the standard insulators. Um, they're quite similar to an R33 or R32 one. They're quite small. Um, they were actually provided in a kit. I found them in a little bag, and they were a lot tighter fit because the O-rings they supplied are too small, and they didn't fit in there very snug. You can get thicker O-rings as well, um, but I just chose to use those because they're there and they don't leak at all. So. See them there, nice snug fit. The injector can't move. It's all um, all snug in there. Now, these are three quarter length injectors, not full length. And the fuel rail kit, this particular one anyway, this Aeroflow one, they uh, they make it for a full length. And because of this, the spaces that go between the fuel rail and the actual inlet manifold are too long. Um, so it was just a matter of trial and error and I had to cut them down and file them bit by bit because they're aluminium they're really easy to file down so I just um, did a lot of trial and error to get that length right now, obviously depending on what injector you have and all that sort of thing that length is going to change so I'm not going to give you the length if you do have these particular injectors in this particular rail I can give you the length if you would like uh, just comment down below and I'll, I'll chuck it in there so yeah uh, I'm running 50 psi fuel pressure which is what the tuner said it as and it's all good got all brand new vacuum lines throughout the entire car just just in case there's any leaks and the uh, other fuel line goes down here and into the fuel filter and then down to the tank so on the dyno with this fuel pump in this configuration had far more fuel than I needed um, it ran out of puff on the turbo uh, before the fuel let, let out so I can push a little bit more but I've only got a 0.63 rear housing on this 3071 so it's probably best if I get a bigger rear housing if I want to chase more power but it's making really really good torque and pretty good power so this is the dyno graph, so the green line is my old dyno. So you can see this is tractive effort, uh, not torque as such. So making a lot more torque at the same RPM as before, around 20 k's an hour in fourth, and um, picks up torque far more and sort of holds torque throughout the range a lot better. Uh, power picks up a lot earlier a lot lot earlier and it sort of just flattens out whereas my old one with 98 it kind of peaked at limiter whereas now it's making similar power to what it was at limiter way back here so it's not making much more power peak power difference but you can definitely feel it when you drive the car it comes on boost really really hard and uh, it's very very fun car to drive so again this is the dynograph power and boost so you can see it ramps onto boost very very quickly and just holds 21 pound all the way through the rev range so really nice boost control this one this is a Grady Profect B spec 2 and um, yeah so I'm very happy with it I could like I said put a bigger rear housing on and chase a bit more power or I could get more power out of this housing but it starts to just get a little bit warm and I've taken it down to the drags I managed to just get a 12.1 12136. Uh, I can get far better times than that, but I was wheel spinning first and second. So I'm running 245 semi slicks on 18 psi. So I'm going to try soften up the rear suspension because it's set up for drifting. So the rear is very, very stiff. So I'm going to try to soften that up as much as possible. Maybe even run stock springs and then get some 265s or 275s in them. Should be able to push into your 11s, mid 11s, quite easily. So it's a quick little car this one, this is just my uh, new boost controller, I've got a brand new Perfect B-Spec 2, so it's nice, just use factory mounting points, nice and neat, just wrapped it in some heat wrap and uh, to the gate with Screamer, running no wiring harness in the engine bay on this one, everything runs behind the dash because I don't run any aircon, 
and the wiring harness that usually runs down to your headlights actually runs behind the guard here so there's no harness whatsoever through here as I've kept it melting igniters so the igniter module is actually where the glove box is and the harness no harness, no aircon, no nothing, it's all blanked off and the wiring harness just runs out of that hole over there so nice and clean well that's the build guys, sorry I didn't get a dyno video, I actually couldn't be there at the time when it was getting dynoed but um, hope you enjoyed the video, ask any questions you like and uh, I'll try to get some GoPro footage of some drags next time I go so stay tuned and I'll see you later